Hey everyone, we got a store update from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We got a bunch of big things happening out here. We got rice disappearing off the shelves. We got propane disappearing off the shelves. Um, I'm gonna walk you through kind of showing you what the gardening section looks like here in Pen Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, at Aldi, we're seeing uh, limits placed on certain products as well. So a lot of things happening in the supply chain out there. So I wanna jump into it and show you the pictures and uh, let's get talking about what's going on here. Please do let us know what's happening in your neck of the woods. Use the word update in your comments to, if you have an update for us. Uh, that way we can get that out to everyone else. Let's jump into the pictures. Start today at Dollar General. Now, I don't usually go to Dollar Generals, but I was driving past and I was like, hey, you guys talk about Dollar General a lot. So I popped my head in just to see what the store shelves look like here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They didn't look too, too bad. The dairy section was pretty thin. Uh, some of the sugar... Uh, they seem to be having some issues with the vinegar. And we're going to see that Walmart's having issues with the sugar as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Vegetable oil being low and olive oils just are having problems with the uh, cooking oils in general. So that's just kind of a thing. Like I said, the milk section was a bit thin. I'm not sure what they usually look like, so I don't want to put too much in there. You guys let me know if Dollar Generals look like this generally where you are or if, uh, or if they look worse or they look better. Uh, let us know down in the comments down below. Okay, let's hop over to Walmart. Um, I'm a little more uh, used to uh, checking out what's going on over here. Frozen food section was a little bit lower than it normally is, um, particularly the ice cream. I was just noticing the ice cream. I don't, you know, I don't buy all these fancy ice creams, but um, the ice cream sections were pretty low. Um, there's a bunch of products out of stock. That's not typical for them. Uh, the frozen corn dogs and frozen um, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and all that kind of stuff like that are low, but they've been kind of like that off and on uh, for months and months. Pizzas were a little bit low, especially the Totino's pizzas, the the cheap, cheap end of things. Uh, those were a bit low. Uh, potatoes, frozen potatoes were low. Uh, not critically low. None of these things really critical and none of these things are super, super vital uh, resources as well. But I will point out that the applesauce is fronted here. Um, you can see that there's uh, uh, nothing behind uh, some of those rows of applesauce. Uh, this is probably due to the cinnamon recall that's happening out there. Uh, so that's probably what's causing the applesauce shortage. I'm not hearing other things like apple shortages or anything like that. So it does seem to be, it came about the same about time that we had the cinnamon recalls. So that's probably what's, uh, what's impacting that. Because of that, I imagine we're going to see, uh, we're going to see these uh, applesauces get back on the shelves relatively quickly. So, um, and of course, applesauce isn't like mission critical for anyone. I mean, if you have kids, uh, there should be plenty on the shelf for now. Uh, you might want to steer clear of the cinnamon flavored ones um, and, and just get the plain ones. Uh, creamers, powdered creamers, they actually expanded this section. So while it's not super th thick, it is wider than it normally is. So uh, that that's actually better than what it looked like at first. Uh, some of the jams and jellies, uh, having issues with that. Coffee. Coffee was surprisingly low. Now, uh, the the generic coffee was a little th uh, thin, but it really was the Maxwell House that just didn't have uh, that whole bottom shelf. It's usually full to the brim, but not today. And that's uh, that's something I did kind of notice. Salad dressing's a little bit lower than normal, but. Um, uh, not too much worse than par for the course. Uh, we've been struggling to keep those Italian dressings on the shelves. Vinegar, still kind of having issues. I don't know why there's black spots on uh, on some of those jugs. That's kind of concerning. Apple cider vinegar has been a bit sparse recently. Uh, we're having a little bit more trouble with apple cider vinegar, apparently. Uh, let me know if you're seeing that out in your way, too, because that's just kind of what I'm seeing around here. The, the white vinegar is being pretty good, but the apple cider vinegar, I don't know if that's related to the applesauce or not. Uh, one thing I will note here is uh, where's the 20-pound bags of rice? Because there's no 20-pound bag uh, great value brand of uh, rice there. You can get the 5-pounders, but uh, no 20-pounders. 
and that is unusual. Uh, we haven't seen that outage uh, here for a while. So hopefully that was just a one-off. Somebody came and just decided to stock up. And friends, unfortunately, a lot of Walmarts are like that, where there's enough rice on the shelf for one family at a time to stock up. If you go in there and you try, you know, picking up uh, four to five or six uh, bags of 20 pound uh, rice, you're going to wipe out the shelves. You're, you're probably not even going to be able to fill your order completely. Uh, you're going to have to order that online at Walmart now. So that's just kind of the way it is, at least the stores I've seen. Some of you guys have some more rural stores where they're more used to those type of orders. So maybe you can get by with that. Uh, but barbecue sauces and other condiments just kind of low uh, in the meat light section, as I like to call it, uh, <laughs> the chilies and that kind of thing. A little sparse, we got some gaps there going on. That's a little bit concerning. When it comes over to the meat section, at first glance, it doesn't look too bad, but when you start looking a little closer at the spam, uh, you'll notice the spam is uh, kind of missing some things there. We got some gaps up there. Vienna sausages looking fairly well stocked, but uh, not fully stocked. And also, once again, we see the flavored spam being placed out of reach of anyone uh, that is shorter than five eight or five ten or something like that uh, short people you're gonna have to ask for assistance to get up to the flavored spam because they're hiding it from you <laughs> i i don't know why maybe just tall people eat spam and, and short people just don't eat spam maybe walmart knows something we don't if you guys like spam um let us know down in the comments down below um i'll say this Honestly, I've stocked a lot of Vienna sausages and I've stocked a lot of Spam. Even though I don't eat Spam very often, it's just the fact that those things are basically going to be good for indefinitely, right? Um, as long as you don't break the seal on any of them. Uh, tuna fish uh, is also another great thing to stock. Uh, the great value tuna fish uh, kind of wiped out here. Check that out. That whole gap there is... Uh, Tuna fish, generic. We've got lots of name brand stuff. Even the name brand seems to be kind of dented a little bit, uh, but definitely the, the generic stuff disappearing pretty fast. Uh, here's an overview of the meat section. Keystone looks pretty well stocked. Some of you guys complaining out there that you're not seeing ground beef, Keystone ground beef where you are. I'm seeing plenty of Keystone ground beef here. So maybe it's all been shipped here to Pittsburgh. I have been buying up, uh, <clears throat> let's just say, more than my fair share of <laughs> ground beef in Keystone form. Uh, every time I go, I pick up a couple cans, and I, I may be skewing the demographics here in Pittsburgh. I don't know. Uh, Stovetop stuffing. Sorry about the blurry picture. I'm still getting used to this, uh, this phone. Um, Stovetop stuffing. Uh, taking up a lot more space, and they're still not able to stock it. I mean, in the off-season, it's not Thanksgiving, and they're not able to keep that stocked. That is a little bit concerning, but it just keeps expanding. Now it's at three shelves. It's just taking up more and more mashed potato sections. Uh, before we move on any further, we do want to thank our sponsor, Genesis Gold Group. If you have an IRA or 401k that you want to uh, do something in physical metals, uh, Jonathan and his team would be a fantastic uh, group to talk with. If you do call them directly with that number right on the screen there, uh, do make sure that you mention this channel because that they do waive the setup fee, which they would normally charge you, and that, that could be uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So um, definitely mention that. We talked to them. Uh, apparently, uh, he's not giving that to everybody, but because uh, we were one of the first channels uh, to actually uh, work with them, uh, they're still keeping that up. As promised, because I keep saying it. So I'll keep saying that they're waiving the setup fee. Uh, but when we start looking at the vegetable sections here, now this is kind of the weird vegetable, like boiled peanuts and, and sauerkraut and stuff like that. Uh, but there's some, there's some gaps there. That's not as well stocked as it normally is. And, that, and like I said, that's kind of some weird stuff there. Uh, spaghetti sauces, this section didn't look too bad, but the next section looks a lot worse. Uh, once again, I'm still seeing that the great value brand seems to be wiped out a lot faster than the name brand. People are shifting over to value, great value. <laughs> uh, they're not uh, getting the name brand stuff quite as much anymore, and that is definitely showing. 
Pasta looking pretty good out here in Pittsburgh. I haven't heard too many of you complaining about pasta shortages where you are too. So maybe that is uh, looking pretty good, uh, at least in the near term. Uh, we are seeing more and more of those plastic bags showing up though, uh, instead of the cardboard boxes. Uh, olive oils, definitely low. Uh, that, that, there's a bunch of gaps there. Surprisingly, it's the name brands that are being impacted more than the generic. Uh, you can still get the generics pretty easily. Uh, it is the name brand olive oils that are disappearing. Uh, vegetable oils, it's the opposite. More name brand uh, showing up on the shelves and less of the generic. Some of the generics being fronted and that is definitely showing that there is uh, some strain in the system there. It's just a whole mix of vegetable oils that, uh, that we're not used to seeing. Uh, they're having issues with the soybeans and the soybean presses and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, soybean oils and canola oil uh, prices are up across the board and we're definitely seeing that reflected. Salt sections here, they did seem to restock the plain salt and the iodine salt in the uh, great value section. Um, and the name brand seems to be doing fairly well there. Um, flour a little bit low lower than I've seen since Christmas, and sugar uh, looked a little bit low. Now, I know they could be just ready to replace these pallets, but then I go over just a little further and I see all the 20 pound bags of uh, sugar seem to be missing except for this torn one right here. So the fact that that whole bottom shelf is wiped out of 20 pounders uh, makes this seem a little bit more, uh, more something to note. So we'll just keep an eye on sugar right there. Uh, that is the, the white sugar that is not the name brand. Uh, you're looking at uh, beet sugar, right? As opposed to the name brand, uh, some, a lot of times is sugar cane. Uh, that uh, is more expensive and of course, um, arguably better for you, but um, who knows these days, everything's kind of up and down. Eggs, definitely up in price. Hey, remember back when eggs were like a buck 40 a dozen? Yeah, they're a lot more expensive right now. And uh, they're probably still gonna be going up there. They're estimating that egg prices are gonna go up a little bit further. Uh, I, I just keep getting flummoxed by this. The fact that they can't keep their, their uh, sodas, their generic sodas in stock, uh, kind of blows me away because, I mean, it's just like mix the chemicals with the food coloring and the uh, whatever and uh, put the bottle on the shelf. I mean, they control the supply chain. You, you think that they'd be able to keep those things stocked, but they're really having trouble keeping soda on the shelves. Um, so I don't know, maybe people are drinking a whole heck of a lot more great value soda or something. I don't know. Well, name brand soda has gone through the roof price wise. I'm used to be able to get uh, a two liter bottle for a buck when it's on sale. Now you can't get them for anything less than a buck 50. And that's a really good sale right now. Uh, prices are definitely up all across the board. Uh, half and half, uh, whipping cream, we got some, it's a little bit low, but uh, not the worst we've seen recently. Sour cream and all the creams and stuff like that, a little bit low, not terrible. Now we're gonna walk you through a, a pool shock a little bit. I've mentioned pool shock a bunch of times. I went actually over to the, the pool section to kind of look at some of the ingredients of some of these things out there. Um, and we're also gonna show you the gardening section and we got all the to go to too. So let's just keep on boot, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bumping through that I guess that's because I want to say boot booting through but that just doesn't make any sense sorry about that uh, butter looks fairly good land of lakes a little bit thin but um, um, other than that the uh, margarines looking thinner but um, you know probably probably shouldn't be over there anyway uh, but then uh, some of the cleaning supplies were a little bit thin laundry detergent was a little sparse. Some of you guys complaining about dog food and cat food out there. This is the dry cat food aisle. The canned cat food aisle did not look too bad. Um, I didn't see it uh, down enough to really even warrant a picture. This is the dog food aisle, uh, dry dog food, and it looks pretty good. Um, so if you guys are, are really low on dog food or cat food where you are, uh, compare, compare your Walmarts to these pictures here and let me know if you're seeing significant, uh, significantly less on your store shelves. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. Sometimes people just don't find their brand and, uh, and then, you know, it's a dog food shortage when it's, you know, just their brand uh, is, is out of stock or something like that. Um, but uh, uh, mason jars, 
Uh, we are seeing less of them and they are definitely up in price, uh, but they are available. Um, so that's good to know. Um, fuels, we're, we're moving into a section where people are not really concerned about winter as much, but uh, people are starting to think about camping and that kind of thing. So the camping section is going to be restocked better. And just to kind of point out a few things that you might want to look at, um, I particularly like these uh, these fuel canisters because I have some backpacking stoves. The the uh, These are more expensive. This one's all dented, uh, so I didn't get that. Um, I would not recommend these butane ones um, because this butane is basically what these things are, um, but these things uh, per ounce are more expensive than these things um, because it just... Um, and butane doesn't perform super well uh, in the cold. Uh, this is like isobutane, so it's like mixed with some, some stuff so it performs better in the wintertime. Um, this is the one that really has me kind of interested down here. Um, I'm looking into kerosene more. Um, I haven't really been stocking kerosene, but 11 bucks a gallon uh, for the shelf-stable stuff. Uh, you can get it cheaper at the pump uh, if you have a kerosene pump. Uh, out where you are, but the, the pumped kerosene is not going to last as long because it's probably not going to be airtight like, uh, like these packages. Uh, the camp fuel, for the Coleman fuel, uh, just make sure you actually have something that can actually use that. Uh, but this, this shelf up here uh, is uh, the four-pack propanes. Um, I was looking for them actually, and the four-pack propanes were just gone. Uh, so that was kind of a little bit concerning. Uh, this is what the seed section looks like, gardening and seed section. Uh, if it's anything like last year and the year before, seeds are going to disappear real fast. So uh, if you haven't already bought your seeds online from uh, better sources, uh, this is probably where you're going to get a bunch of your seeds from. Uh, we've seen a lot lower sprout rates uh, for uh, seeds coming from big box stores. So be aware of that. I do rep recommend uh, going online and ordering them from a more reputable uh, source like Burpees. Uh, you can even get uh, Augustin Farms has like a can of uh, seeds, but there's uh, different seed packets out there. I'll try to get uh, some deals on that for you up. But uh, uh, if all else fails, go ahead and buy the little individual packets of seeds from the from these, it's super convenient, but I'd, it's obviously not like super high quality. Now I've talked a lot about pull shock out there, uh, about uh, using that for chemical treatment for your water because um, there, there has been pull shock available that is useful. This is not the stuff, okay? Um, I was looking for the brands that we've seen before. Uh, Clorox, uh, Extra Blue, do not get those. Um, if you know better than I do, okay, cool. If you've done your homework, cool. But uh, I'm not seeing the same chemicals here, and I'm seeing more additives and stuff like that, active ingredients that I'm not familiar with. Uh, so I would say that this is going to be a hard no. And from what I saw on the Walmart shelves, I did not see uh, what I was looking for. So uh, just be aware that I'm not seeing the... the uh, I think it was like HGH. Now they had like a, a plant fire or something like that a couple years back. And that just kind of threw the pull shock um, inventory out of whack for a bit. Uh, even water treatment plants and stuff like that were having a hard time getting the chemicals for the uh, for treating municipal waters and stuff like that. So And they were getting f first dibs on that. And so I think a lot of the pull shocks actually switched chemicals on us. So be super aware of that. If, you, if you're thinking about rotating your pull shock, make sure you read those ingredients really closely and you know what you're looking for, okay? Uh, this isn't the video to, uh, to get into all that. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there. Just, just type into the search bar and there's great, great folks that will answer a bunch of your questions about what you should be looking for on those packages if you're going to use it for that purpose. And they're going to warn you about how to store that stuff because it's nasty, nasty chemicals. Uh, Aldi, uh, we have um, just their, their salads and the vegetables, just the produce, very, very bad and sad. It just hasn't looked better. Hopefully it turns around this, this summer uh, that they finally start getting some, some decent lettuce and salads because we've been just having just really, really nasty salads for a while at a lot of these different stores. I don't even buy it at Walmart because the quality there even is really low. 
I've had some decent luck with Sam's Club uh, quality for the produce, so um, the bag salads and such like that over there. Still missing the hot cocoa over at Aldi. Applesauce is, um, well, that's about half as much applesauce as we saw last week. So that is definitely dropping. I don't think people are panic buying applesauce, but uh, if applesauce drops any more in inventory, people may start panic buying. Spaghetti sauce is back. We saw that there were just like empty, empty on spaghetti sauce last week. So this is definitely good to see that they have spaghetti sauce back on the shelf. Uh, but some of the pasta uh, sections have gaps here and there. Nothing mission critical, but you may not get the variety that you're looking for. Uh, cooking oils, definitely low. A bunch of that is fronted. Um, so, I mean, even like the, the soybean oil, the vegetable oil over there uh, looks really, really low. Um, but, uh, you know, you do have other options that you can just switch over to if, if that's kind of what you're getting anyway. Meat section looks fairly good. Tuna, um, fairly well stocked. Um, nothing too, too much to complain here except the Vienna sausages were a little low, but they are on sale, so who knows. Uh, dairy, like yogurts and stuff like that, a bit low. Cream cheeses, having issues with that. And butter, still here at Aldi. Uh, they're just not able to get us. I think it's just because their prices are just better than Walmart and people are just buying it here instead of over there. Uh, limits on butter, that's the big thing. Um, I, I know six blocks of butter is, is a pretty big limit, um, but that wasn't the only place that we saw the limit six. Um, so they are putting limits there because uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe people are reselling the stuff, but the problem is that, uh, uh, that whenever you start seeing limits there, that is an issue. All right, that's what I'm seeing here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let me know what you guys are seeing where you are. Just reply uh, to this video or any video on this channel. Use the word update somewhere in your update, and that will get it to the right place. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, on screen, if you want to get some more information from Genesis Gold, there's a link right there. Uh, or if you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one right there as well. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar, The Poplar Report, out.